Chuck Schumer just reached a deal with Mitch McConnell. Let's discuss the details in this video. But first, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I'd also like to thank my sponsor, Webull. They've partnered with me to provide free stocks for my viewers, valued up to $3,700. It's completely free and takes two minutes. All you need to do is open an account using my link. The link is in the description of this video, just below the like button. Feel free to sell the stocks immediately to use the money if you'd like. Just make sure to fully open an account and then click on the green button that says get free stocks. Okay guys, let's get right into it. But before we do, I just wanna let you know that if you still have not received your $600 stimulus check, there is a way for you to track it. Now the IRS has provided a phone number. It is a direct phone number to the IRS where you can call them and they can help you track your payments. Of course, you can continue to, ch to check that IRS Dot gov get my payment portal but if you're a little lost you could also try this phone number it's on your screen here it's a 1-800 number i'm also going to put it in the description of this video so feel free so feel free to go down there and use that number if you still have not received your stimulus check of course that being said you could still file for it on your tax return and tax season is expected to start in the next couple of weeks so make sure to go ahead and claim that on your tax return to receive it as a tax refund if you still have not received your small $600 stimulus check by the time it is tax season. Okay, Joe Biden has continued to try and get this package done at a bipartisan level, but there has been a couple of things slowing down this deal. First, that impeachment trial that is going to happen in the Senate. Now, the good news is we are delaying that for a week, so that does give us an extra week in, to get this stimulus package done. However, there is also that transfer of power in the Senate. As Democrats have taken control of the Senate, Mitch McConnell has been giving us mixed signals because on the one hand, he has said, we're willing to work with Biden. Let's try and get this done on a bipartisan level. He's even told Republicans to set aside their differences to try and get this deal done for the American people. At the same time, McConnell has been, has been slowing down that transfer of power in the Senate, and he has not let Chuck Schumer take control as majority leader. Now, one of the main issues here has been that filibuster. Now, I've talked about the filibuster many times in my videos. Basically, Democrats are considering getting rid of that filibuster rule, which would then basically pave the path for Democrats to pass unlimited stimulus for the next two years with Republicans completely unable to block it. However, some consider this an extreme move and this is why Democrats do not want to do this. This is their plan C. It's not their first plan, but despite that, Mitch McConnell wants them, has wanted Democrats to put it in writing that they will not eliminate that filibuster rule and he has been delaying that transfer of power in the Senate and therefore delaying that stimulus package. But just last night, Chuck Schumer came to a deal with Mitch McConnell, and McConnell agreed to complete that transfer of power, which is setting the stage for a massive stimulus package. Now, Democrats did not agree in paper to not eliminate that filibuster. They just gave him their verbal commitment that they would not do so. So both sides are spinning this differently. Chuck Schumer is saying that Mitch McConnell waved the white flag, he gave up, and Democrats got their way. McConnell is saying that he got his way because Democrats agreed to not get rid of this filibuster. However, as I, as I just said, they did not put this in writing. This was just a verbal agreement, not even a verbal contract. Let's see how Mitch McConnell put this. He said, Today, two Democratic senators publicly confirmed that they will not vote to end the legislative filibuster. They agree with President Biden's and my view that no Senate majority should destroy the right of future minorities of both parties to help shape legislation. The legislative filibuster was a key part of the foundation beneath the Senate's last 50-50 power sharing agreements in, 21, in 2001. With these assurances, I look forward to moving ahead with a power sharing agreement modeled on that precedence. So McConnell is spinning this deal as a fair compromise while Schumer is saying that McConnell waved the white flag. Now Mitch McConnell is contradicting himself because he himself has augmented the filibuster rules to his own benefit. Now you've all heard about all those court justices, the Supreme Court justices and judges that Republicans have put in place these last four years. Well, one of the reasons they were able to do this was because McConnell removed Supreme Court justice from that filibuster rule because originally 
Republicans would not have been able to do that because Democrats would have filibustered. But McConnell said, you know what, let's change the filibuster rules to our advantage. But now he is slamming Democrats for considering doing that themselves. He's saying it's now it's unconstitutional. It's unfair. It should be illegal. Democrats should not be allowed to remove the filibuster, although McConnell augmented it to his own advantage when it benefited Republicans. So whether you like Democrats or Republicans, you have to admit here that Mitch McConnell is being a hypocrite. But the bottom line here is that we finally have a deal between Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell for a transfer of power in the Senate, which is now setting the stage for a massive stimulus package and a lot of initiatives that Democrats want to institute, of course. They want to include a student loan debt forgiveness, more stimulus checks, not just for child dependence, but adult dependence as well, as well as more stimulus for those on Social Security. They want to include a $200 per month stimulus boost for those on Social Security benefits. They want to enact a 15 dollar per hour minimum wage, as well as climate change initiatives to help protect the environment. Now, Chuck Schumer had a lot to say as well. Let's take a look and see what he had to say. Of course, he continues to slam Trump for what happened the last couple of months, and he is saying that this impeachment trial will move forward and that Trump needs to pay for what he did. Now, let me know in the comments if you agree. One thing that's been slowing down stimulus and slowing down a bipartisan nature is the prospect of this impeachment trial. Now, Democrats confirmed that they will delay this until February 8th, giving Republicans and Democrats in the Senate an extra week to try and come to a bipartisan support on that next stimulus package. He is also urging President Biden to explore using emergency powers to declare a climate emergency. Similar to the way Trump has done this to help build the border wall and help send more money out for unemployment through FEMA, Biden could do this and use FEMA funds or other government funds to help institute initiatives that would protect the environment. Now, Chuck Schumer also went on to say that the Senate Democratic majority, now that Democrats have the majority in the Senate, they will work quickly for big, bold change and quick change for the American people, including stimulus. Now, let's see exactly what he had to say. Deal. So we have to act quickly. Now, people can't get vaccines. Right now, people are losing their jobs, can't feed their kids. And then there's a lot of bolder action we have to do that preceded COVID, and maybe COVID showed us the need and climate. We have to do something about climate. Things are getting, we don't have any more time. I think of my little two-year-old grandson, Noah, Noah, and, you know, I ride my bike along the southern shore of Brooklyn. Mm. And about a month after he was born, I said, will he ever see this? Because if the oceans rise, it'll be gone. It's a beautiful wetland. So there's climate, there's economic inequality. About 75% of the nation feels they can't get ahead and are not getting ahead. You know, only the top, very top is doing well. There's racial inequality. We saw with the, you know, horrible murders of uh, Ahmed Aubrey and uh, Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, those scars. And there's democracy. We just in the Senate took a bill that was H.R. 1 in the House and named it S1, making our democracy better. There is so much to do. We need strong, bold action. And we've got to get it done. One way or another, we've got to get it done. Okay, guys, let me know in the comments if you agree with Schumer. He said one way or another, we've got to get this done. And one way or another, they will get this done with or without Republican support. Because despite the fact that Republicans continue to slow this down, Democrats have a plan B and a plan C and will get this done. And I've covered this many times in my video. First of all, they will move on to a budget reconciliation plan, which only requires Democrats to approve that stimulus package. And their plan C is to eliminate the filibuster completely, which would pave the path for unlimited stimulus because they would not need a single Republican vote at all for any stimulus package and any legislation at all for that matter in the Senate. Of course, Republicans don't want that, but a lot of Republican voters are now pushing for this because it would allow for more stimulus. And let me know in the comments if you think Democrats should eliminate that filibuster. Like I've said before, Democrats only need 51 votes, so they would not need a single Republican vote to eliminate this filibuster. And we do expect to have a stimulus package approved in the House early next week, as early as next Monday, Pelosi has promised that they are working on writing up that bill today, this week, 
currently working on that formal proposal and the house will be approving that early next week we're hoping monday and then they're going to be passing it to the senate and working on a bipartisan vote to try and get that done by the end of the week before they start that impeachment trial in the senate now of course biden continues to push for this bipartisan support but if he doesn't get it they will move to budget reconciliation which is that plan b however Best case scenario here, we will get that bipartisan support, which would mean we could have stimulus in as little as three weeks. And Biden has said that he would only negotiate with Republicans in the Senate for quote unquote a couple of weeks. That generally means two weeks, right? And this has been a big, strong push from Bernie Sanders. Bernie has been pushing Biden. Do not negotiate with with Republicans for weeks and weeks and months and months. The people cannot wait. We need quick action. And quite frankly, Democrats promised them Quick action, especially after those Georgia Senate Democrats won those elections. Remember, Biden said that these checks will go out immediately. Those elections were three weeks ago, guys. And now we're waiting at least another three weeks. So Bernie has been urging Biden, do not compromise with Republicans and do not negotiate for more than a couple of weeks. If it takes a couple weeks, Biden has now said that they will most likely then move to budget reconciliation. However, to be honest with you guys, Best case scenario here, we will get a bipartisan support because that would allow us to get stimulus checks in about three weeks and a budget reconciliation could take two to three months. Even though they won't need Republican support, it only needs Democratic votes. This process is a lot more cumbersome and a lot more detailed, which takes a lot longer just to make sure it's being done properly. And on top of that, there are some things that would not be included in budget reconciliation. This plan This program has its limitations. One thing that probably would not be included is that $15 minimum wage, and it's still not clear exactly what else would be excluded, but it wouldn't be as comprehensive as a bipartisan bill could be. That is why a budget reconciliation plan is plan B, and Biden continues to push for a bipartisan plan. Now, with that said, Biden has signaled that he is willing to compromise. And the bipartisan group in the Senate, there is a bipartisan group of 16 senators who talked to the White House this weekend and told Biden one issue they have with his stimulus package proposal is those stimulus checks and the income limit. Now, Biden has been on record as saying that he would be willing to lower the income threshold for those who qualify for stimulus checks. Now, don't worry, guys. This most likely would not affect you. This would only affect people who make over $100,000 per year. Because the way his proposal is currently written, those who make over $100,000 would still get stimulus checks. And the bipartisan group of senators, including Mitt Romney, spoke to Biden this weekend and told him, you know what, we're trying to work at a bipartisan level, but this is one thing that both sides have disagreed on. Both sides think that those who make six figures should not get stimulus checks. And Biden has responded in saying he is willing to compromise in a good faith effort to get a deal done. He has told Republicans, okay, let's work on this. Let's lower that income threshold so those who make six figures don't get stimulus checks. But guys, be reasonable and let's get this package done and get it done quickly. We'll still have to wait and see exactly what else Republicans request. Of course, one other thing we're thinking they're going to request is liability protections for businesses so so they cannot be sued during this pandemic by employees or customers. Of course, there is also the chance that once this bill is passed in the House next week and ends up in the Senate, Republicans could say, you know what, just like the old packages, this is DOA, this is dead on arrival, we're not even going to give you our request, we're not even going to do a counteroffer, we're just going to reject this immediately, at which point Democrats would essentially have to move immediately to budget reconciliation, which means on the one side, good news, because they will be getting that package done, but on the one side, bad news, because it's going to take a couple of months instead of a couple of weeks. This is why Bernie, as I said previously, has continued to push Joe Biden. Do not take your time with Republicans. We need to move to budget reconciliation as soon as possible. The longer Democrats take in negotiations with Republicans, the longer the stimulus check gets delayed, and then the later they start reconciliation, the later that process will end as well. Again, this is why Bernie has pushed Biden to say only give them two weeks. After two weeks, we're moving to budget reconciliation to get this deal done. But with that said, guys, we will have updates on timelines for that stimulus package. So don't forget to subscribe. I will keep you updated, including stimulus for those on Social Security, that unemployment boost, 
as well as when you can expect to get that $1,400 stimulus check. Let's finish with a quick update on unemployment before we wrap up this video. Now, unemployment continues to be an issue, guys. If you're on unemployment, stay strong out there, guys. Help is coming soon. I know most people have begun receiving that $300 unemployment boost, and Biden plans to approve that $400 weekly unemployment boost as well. But if you look at your screen, Unemployment claims continue to be near 1 million new claims per week. That is 1 million new people filing for unemployment every single week, guys. We need this stimulus package approved quickly. We cannot wait for Mitch McConnell and Republicans to get on board. And Bernie is right. If they do not get on board in the first couple of weeks, we need to move to plan B and get this done. Guys, 1 million people every week. On your screen, March and April, this is where we peaked. Of course, unemployment went down slowly over the next eight months, continued to get better, but we've pretty much flattened out at about a million claims per week. Okay, that is absolutely insane. And experts say that this doesn't even include those who are either underemployed, meaning they want to work full-time, but they're only getting part-time hours, or those who are working full-time, but are getting poverty wages. Those who are working full-time, but are still not making enough to get out of poverty. Guys, this is completely ridiculous. And experts think that if you include those who are underemployed, those who want to work more but are not getting enough hours to put food on the table, and those who are employed but are making poverty wages, if you include all three of those groups, including those who are unemployed, we're at about 25%. Experts think about 25% of the country are either underemployed, underemployed, or making a poverty wage. Guys, this is completely unacceptable. Our leadership has to do something to change this. That is one fourth of our entire country. This is why Bernie Sanders continues to push for that minimum wage increase. Look, Bernie just posted on Twitter that there is no excuse to not raise the minimum wage. One of the major arguments that, that opponents of the increased minimum wage have is that it will increase unemployment. They say, you know what? If you increase, un I mean, if you increase minimum wage, then employers will lay people off to offset those costs. But he gave an example here. The minimum wage in Australia is almost $20 per hour, and their unemployment rate in Australia is less than the U.S. So the minimum wage in Australia is $19.84. The unemployment rates in Australia is 6.6%. Now, the U.S. federal unemployment, I mean, sorry, minimum wage is $7.25 per hour, and the U.S. unemployment rate is 6.7. So our minimum wage is a third of what it is in Australia, yet our unemployment rate is higher. So Bernie said, please don't tell me that raising the minimum wage to a living wage at least $15 per hour will cost us jobs, okay? And let me know in the comments if you agree. Of course, guys, this is all in theory. We won't know the exact rep repercussions of increasing minimum wage, but guys, at least we have to try, right? The government is willing to try and give tax cuts to corporations. They're willing to try and give tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires. But why won't they try and give a minimum wage increase to the American people? Why won't they try and give bigger stimulus checks to the American people? Let's see how it goes. A lot of experts are on Bernie Sanders' side, and they do think that increasing minimum wage would actually boost the economy. But with that said, guys... Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I will keep you posted on this increased minimum wage as well as stimulus and just general news as well. And if you made it this far into my video, thank you so much for supporting my channel. It really means the world to me and I really do appreciate every single view. It's honestly been a dream come true this year to just come on here every single day and make videos giving you guys the information you need to get through this crisis, as well as connecting with you guys in the co comments and building this community. And it's my dream to go full time here on YouTube, guys. So if I can make it to 100,000 subscribers, I should be able to make it there. I should be able to go full time if I make it to 100,000. So if you haven't yet, guys, please subscribe. And with that said, guys, again, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.